my name is Andrew Varga and I'm with Razorback Off-Road and today we're really excited to kind of go over a new rack that we're introducing for 2020. It's for the Can-Am Defender and I just wanted to go over some of the components that will come with your rack that we include. Um, you will not have to do any drilling. Everything will be able to be bolt-on and it, it will be a very easy install. Some of the components that you will receive is you'll receive a full tray and that should be three pieces. So you're gonna have a left and a right piece, and then you're gonna have a middle bracket that will tie the two pieces together, and that'll, that'll be included. And also what is included is, is the two sides. So some of the tools that I suggest that you use to install, it'll make your install very easy. So I use a 9 16 and a 7 16 box wrench, and I use a 9 16 a 7 16 and a 3 8 socket. We are gonna be pulling some panels off of the machine and it just helps with easier access in, to install your sides. You'll need two Torx bits. You'll need a T20 and a T30 Torx bit to install this rack on the machine. So let me go over some of the hardware that will be included in your kit. So we'll have 3 8 bolts, 3 8 nylocks, and we include these, these mounting plates for your machine. And these will all be used to install the sides of your rack on the machine. And we also include the quarter inch hardware we include all of this and all of this hardware will be used to put together the bracket and this will they'll also be used to install this tray onto the sides. So what we'll begin with is we'll grab our T30 and our T20 Torx bits and we'll go take off the panels on the machine. So I like to have a, a bin kind of nearby because you're gonna be taking off six screws here. And so I'm gonna start with the T30, the Torx 30. And you're going to have three screws up here on top, and you're going to have one underneath the bottom. So, you're going to take these out. That's where this bin comes in handy. Okay, so you're gonna take those three out and then you got one underneath here towards, kind of towards the back. Okay. And then you're gonna grab your T20. Here you got two small, small ones underneath here. So you're gonna take these out. Okay. So there's one. You got one more here in the back. You're gonna kinda wanna hold it up a little bit cause it'll, it'll fall on you. Okay, so you're gonna take this one out. And once you have that out, okay. So when you take this panel off, you're gonna wanna slowly bring it away from the machine. This tail light doesn't come out with it. So you wanna kinda angle it down and then see how it just pops off. You don't want to just pull straight off. You want to kind of angle it and then move it out. And then you're going to just take your panel and just set it off to the side for now. Okay, and just make sure you save your bolts. All right, so now you have all the access you need to mount the sides onto the, onto the machine. So you're going to be using four out of these five mounting holes up here on top, and I'll go into that next. And what you're gonna need for that is you're gonna need your 9 16 box wrench and your 9 16 socket. And you're gonna start with four, four of the uh, 3 8 bolts. And you're gonna need four nylocks, nylock nuts, and then you're gonna need four of these mounting plates, okay? And then you're gonna grab a side and you're gonna go and install it on your machine. So once you have the side off, you're gonna put place the side onto the rail here. So you could go ahead and place your tools kind of in the bed and the hardware. So the thing with, with how we designed this is that we have some flanges that are built into the, the base plate here. And it's to help prevent, it from, prevent the rack from sliding around. So you wanna make sure that this piece is flush with the bottom of the bed rail here. And you wanna make sure that it's pushed all the way to the up against the bed here. So you want it all the way up against the bed and you want the rack all the way back. So back and towards the bed, okay? And we're gonna start with the front here. So you're gonna get your, your 3 8 bolt and your washer. And you go through the top, okay? 
And we've provided these base plates and these are directional. So one side is longer than the other. So you can't install this backwards. So if you try to install it wrong, you'll feel that it won't sit flush on the bottom side of this bed rail. So what you wanna make sure is that it's oriented correctly and it's actually touching the bottom side of the bed rail. And then you're gonna take your nylock, okay? And you're gonna go ahead and just install that, okay? And you're gonna do the same for the rest of these. So we'll start with the front one here. So same thing. Said direction does matter. So I'll go ahead and get those in there. Okay. All right, and we'll do the same for the other two. So we provided eight, eight bolts, eight base, place, base plates. So you're gonna install it basically on these first four holes of the bed rail. Okay, and this will be the last one. So once you have everything in place, just one more time, make sure that it's pulled back and towards the bed, okay? And now you're gonna take your, your box wrench, your 916 box wrench, your 916 socket, and you're gonna go ahead and tighten these down. So you want these fairly tight, so that way this thing doesn't slide on you. So once you've tightened all these down, then you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. Once you have your sides installed in your machine, the next thing you're gonna assemble is the tray. So what I like to start with, I like to start with one side of the tray. And what I'll do is I'll hang one end of the tray off the table a little bit. That way you have plenty of access to install your hardware. You're gonna grab your, the center bracket. So this center bracket's gonna be installed right on this side. And there's kind of, a, kind of a bent part in the tray here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide it in there first, and then you're gonna slide it down in there. See, if you put this in, in first, it won't, it won't fit in there. So you gotta slide it in just like this. And you're gonna grab your carriage bolts, and it's gonna be 10 carriage bolts, and you're gonna grab your your nuts here. So I'll, I'll usually like to get one started, so I start in the middle. Okay, you're gonna grab your nut. Okay, and you're gonna start there. And I usually do the bottoms first, and then I do the sides, just the bottom uh, sides here last. So once you have these all installed, Okay, you're gonna put it in through the side. And you'll notice that on the carriage, you'll have this, uh, this square portion of it. And we've actually cut this into the bracket and also on the tray. So you're just gonna match this to where you'll see the carriage bolt sit flushly against the, uh, the metal here. Because you can install it backwards but it won't sit right. So, okay. So once you have all the, the bolts installed on the first half of the tray, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna orient the trays. And I like to hang, again, one part of it kind of off, like so. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna install it, like I said, with the, with the bent piece in, you're gonna wanna Put this in, end in first, and then this will, should slide right down into this tray. And hanging it off a little bit, you could get at least the first one here started. Okay. And go ahead and get this next one going. You may need to kinda 
prop it up a little bit so you can hold it up like so. And now I'll do the, the middle bolt. The middle bolt here. Okay. So once you have the bottom ones in, you gotta put the, the last ones in on the ends. Okay. And it might take some, take some shimmy in here, but it'll go in. Okay, last one on this side. So that should be all for the carriage bolts. So now you're gonna wanna grab the flange bolts and you're gonna need three of them. There's, there's one bolt that has to go on the front of the tray and then there's gonna be two that are gonna need to be installed on the back. So we start with the front one. Front one you may need to just kinda tilt it up to kinda get clear access to it. Okay. And then you install the two in the back here. And you may need to tilt it up. Just makes it easier for access. And if you notice, and I am leaving all the bolts loose, it just makes it go together a lot better. Keep the tray together or make it easier to install the tray. So now, once you kind of have all of your hardware in place, now you're gonna take your 7 16 socket and your ratchet, and you're just gonna go through, through all of them and just make sure that they're tight now, now that you kind of have them all in there. So we're gonna go ahead and just tighten everything, okay? I'll kind of flip it over just to show you. So since it's like that, so just go through and make sure all of them are tight. You're gonna also need a 3-8 socket and a 7-16 box wrench. You're gonna tighten all the bolts in the back. You do the one in the front. Okay. And don't forget the ones in the side, beat this side. Now that you have all the hardware installed on your tray and tightened down, we're now gonna take the tray and install it on the sides. So now you're gonna place your tray on your rack in between the two sides here. Okay. So you wanna make sure that your rack is, there's a bracket located in the back here. You wanna make sure that the tray is pushed up all the way against the back. You just want to double check both sides before you start placing your hardware. Okay. So now you're going to grab your quarter inch bolts and we're going to start with that rear bracket back here. And so a little trick that I like to use is I like to pick up the, the front end of the tray just, just a little bit. And then that, these back bolts will slide right in there. And in this stage, you don't, you don't want to tighten anything down just yet. You wanna make sure that you have all the bolts installed first, and then you could go back through and tighten everything down. All right, and there's gonna be two more brackets on the side here. You can go ahead and install both of those as well. Okay. So like I said, leave everything loose, and once you have these bolts in place, you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. So now that you have all of your hardware in place on your tray, you're gonna now take your 3-8 socket and your 7-16 box wrench. And now you're gonna go through and just make sure everything is tight and secured. All 
All right, and then you're gonna do the same thing to the other side, and once you have it all tightened down, should be good to go. So once you're done installing your rack, now we're gonna put the body panels back on the machine, and we're gonna start with this. So these have a little tab on the plastic here, and you're gonna wanna reinstall it exactly how you took it off. So you're gonna wanna start at a little bit of an angle, and it'll slide right up in there, and voila, it's right into place. You just have to make sure you get around this light. And then you'll get your hardware and start with, don't, you don't wanna cross thread the bolts back on there, so you wanna start with putting them in by hand. Kinda gotta reach in here and put them in by hand. Okay. So just make sure that you start you start with your fingers so you don't cross thread the bolts back on your machine. That would be a bummer. Okay. So you got the large bolts. Don't forget the one down here on the bottom. Okay. Said, get them all done. Finger, then these bottom ones are a little bit tricky, but once you get it, it's not too bad. Kind of got to locate where it's supposed to go. Once you kind of get them started, now you can go through and tighten it on the machine. Okay. Bottom one. And the reason why I got to use a ratchet is because the tire's in the way here, so it's kind of limited access, but it's not too bad. Okay. All right, so there you have it. Once you're done with tightening all the bolts, you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So there you have it. You've now completed your install of your Can-Am Defender rack. If you have any questions about other models that this rack is compatible with, please visit our website at razorbackoffroad.com. On there you'll find the years and the models that this rack is compatible with. We went through, when we went through the design of this rack, we really wanted to focus on versatility and that's why we designed it the way it is. We really couldn't find anything out there that was as versatile of a rack as this. We're really excited to see how you guys will customize this. We've left a lot of areas on this rack that you can fully customize this rack and put all kinds of accessories on it. So we're really excited to see what you guys come up with. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll see you out on the trail.